month ago, on the 19th of January, all justices of the Supreme Court of Israel gathered with many others, the entire Supreme Court judges and the audience in Yad Vashem. This was for the purpose of noting the publication of the book Memory and Justice, Israel's Supreme Court Judges Write About the Holocaust. By the way, one of the editors of this very important book is Professor Stadler, who will shortly give a lecture probably about parts of this amazing masterpiece. In the preface of this book, Estelle Hayut, the president of the Supreme Court, wrote as follows, and I like to quote, The horrors of World War II occurred over 70 years ago, and yet they maintain a grip on our souls and constitute a watershed moment in the history of the Jewish people and of humanity as a whole. As jurists, Justice Hayu told, we have learned from the Holocaust that it is possible to harness law in the service of evil in order to execute a monstrous, organized enterprise of genocide. On the other hand, she wrote, in the post-World War II era, law was one of the first disciplines utilized draw lessons from what occurred. Are these last words of President Hayut accurate? I'm not so sure. Those last words describe a kind of a utopia where law, lawyers, justices, servants of justice, like ministers of justice, do whatever they can in order to promote the good. But as we will see later on in this exhibition, things didn't turn out exactly as we all hoped. By the way, my article in the book dealt with the uh, persecution of Jewish lawyers in Nazi Germany during the six and a half years period of time commencing on January 30th, 1933, and ending at the beginning of World War II, a period during which German Jewish lawyers, as well as judges and academics, went through a horrible organized campaign during which they were deprived of their professional status and rights faced humiliation and violence, and in many cases were imprisoned, sent into exile, and even murdered. It is noteworthy that the German Federal Bar organized a traveling exhibition titled Lawyers Without Rights, which was presented in Israel many, many times, including at the Supreme Court of Justice just <coughs> six years ago. This traveling exhibition tried to reflect the horrors of this period of time, the six and a half years after Hitler gained power and before the Second World War started. The Rosenberg project revealed shocking failures of the German Federal Ministry of Justice in the 50s and 60s of the last century, reflected by the appointed appointment of attorneys who served the Nazi, Nazi regime, or even had Nazi background. They were appointed to senior jobs at the Ministry of Justice. We just heard the frightening figures by the Minister of Justice. Moreover, and this is even more concerning, as a result, the crimes of the Holocaust were not properly prosecuted, and many Nazi criminals were not brought to justice. 
I believe that presenting the Rosenberg project Rosenberg exhibition as well as the Lawyers Without Rights exhibition, both in Germany in, and in Israel and ma in many other countries, is of great importance because they both raise the awareness of large audiences to the historical injustice that took place in Germany before the Second World War, during the Second World War and, of course, the Holocaust, and even after the Second World War. I am glad that our law faculty agreed to present this most important exhibition. I'm a bit sad that many, many of our colleagues are not here. I mean, I'm talking about teachers of our law faculty because they decided to demonstrate in Jerusalem today against things that, now I'm talking only on behalf of, my, of myself, things that bothers us, frighten us, and we must face them with all the force we can because we cannot let this terrible, terrible, I don't know how to call it, revolution uh, take place. Thank you.